Thank you, Steve. I would like to thank um, the organizer of the Bus Industry Confederation for having me here today this afternoon. I'll be presenting the first part of uh, what's next going to be followed by Michael. And uh, my presentation is about empowering this, what we call sustainable mobility in Malaysia. Next, oh, sorry. A short introduction of who is MAI, the Malaysia Automotive Institute. It's uh, an agency under the Ministry of uh, International Trade and Industry, MITI in short. We were formed in the year 2010 as a think tank to the government. Um, part of what we do is develop policies and strategically enhance the ecosystem within the domestic automotive industry and bring it uh, forward, especially towards integration within the region ASEAN and globally. Now, one of the early deliveries of MAI way back in the year 2014 was the announcement of this National Automotive Policy 2014. Now, what is this a policy all about? It was launched in January 2014 and the key deliverables of these policies are two. One is liberalizing the Malaysian automotive industry, meaning open up, get others to come and invest, you know, and give equal, uh, equal, I would say, opportunities to any investors that are coming into the country. Secondly, it's about making Malaysia as the energy efficient hub or energy efficient vehicle hub. Now, what we meant by energy efficient vehicle or EEVs are vehicles that are good in fuel efficiency, meaning lower carbon, uh, lower fuel consumption. Secondly, having a much reduced emission of carbon. Thirdly, has high standards of safety, security, as well as comfort. EV or electric vehicle is very much an important segment of what we call as energy efficient vehicle. When we decide to become the energy efficient vehicle hub of ASEAN, it's just not about producing these EEVs in Malaysia. It's about future vehicles, future passengers and commercial vehicles to be sold in the country should meet these green, uh, green categories as in fuel efficiency, carbon emission and so on. Now, at the same time, it is also about developing technologies that are related to the features of this electric vehicle or the bigger picture, the technology features of the energy efficient vehicles and to take leadership role in two aspects. Number one is development of policy, development of institutional framework, as well as regulatory practices. And in the context of ASEAN, come 1st January 2016, we will be announcing the ASEAN economy community. So there is a need for a leadership role to take up this regulatory framework practices as well as institutional framework to be developed for the region. Secondly, it's obviously about development of the need to have the manufacturing base here in ASEAN. And this is about development of the necessary infrastructure, standards, capacity building, and so on in the context of making sustainable mobility as an industry, as a way of life for uh, passenger cars, for people driving cars in ASEAN and so on, looking at it from a sustainable standpoint. Now, how do we translate what I've just mentioned in the context of electric vehicle? Today's presentation is very, I would say, quite centric towards electric vehicle. So in the context of this, there are four components within the roadmap of our energy efficient vehicle in the context of electric vehicle. Firstly, the, it comprises electric, uh, electric passenger cars, electric vehicles or electric cars. It comprises electric commercial vehicles or electric buses. But at the same time, to complete the ecosystem, we are also indicating or we are putting in in the roadmap the development of batteries as well as using batteries as a form of energy storage. 
The production of electric cars and electric vehicles in Malaysia um, still at, I would say, infancy stage because we are still developing, but the production of both types of vehicles, bus and, and vehicles, will commence as early as June, July 2016, which is next year. And I'm proud to say that in doing this collaboration, we are partnering Bustec or Transit Australia Group as a partner to uh, co-invest with Malaysian companies and to look ASEAN as the region to produce electric buses and to explore this great uh, region you know, as their market base. Now, looking into the ecosystem of electric bus, electric bus can be an intracity, it can be an intercity. So, so for that reason, it is imperative that the design of this bus needs to meet the intent of how the bus is going to be used. And, uh, and because of that one, again, not only in, form I in terms of the chassis of the bus that should be able to accommodate the, the different requirement in terms of kilowatt hours, depending on the distance that the bus will be traveling, but more importantly also that the batteries itself, the module, the module of the batteries can be manufactured to meet to the customized kilowatt hour that a particular bus requires. And for that reason, the whole ecosystem of enabling this, and this is where the manufacturing of lithium ion batteries will also start by next year, sometime in September 2016, and it is part of our electric vehicle penetration plan. And energy storage, we view energy storage as one of the spin off from electric vehicle. We view that electric vehicle cannot just be angled from a vehicle standpoint, you know, but there are many other spin off from the batteries itself, one of which would be the energy storage. To use the lithium ion phosphate batteries to be energy storage and to harness the RE, renewable energy, solar energy, you know, and to use that, store that and use that in the transportation system. So the ecosystem of what is being built now in Malaysia comprises firstly of the module assembly of batteries that will start next year. This will follow with a powder production, which is the material itself, the lithium phosphate itself, then comes in the cell production. And this will allow the, the ecosystem to be customized according to the needs of the batteries. Either it is going to be used in the form of kilowatt hour in a bus, either the bus is an intercity, intracity, or in the form of an energy storage. And lastly, we think that since battery and other materials, composites for example, are all enablers towards green mobility, towards electromobility, there is also a need to start developing, have a roadmap to ensure that whatever that is going to be produced will remain tip top in terms of its, uh, for, for a battery, it, it remains tip top in terms of its energy density, energy storage, and therefore there's this whole collaboration with Australia and must also inform that this is under the Malaysia-Australia Free Trade Agreement. There is a whole form of collaboration now with Australia to develop this, not only the first phase of lithium iron phosphate, but this will be developed into the next generation of batteries and at the same time, the whole development, capacity development of composites that will come in also later on to produce electric cars and electric buses of lighter material, but yet strong material. So all these are being developed, are being developed together to make sure that the, elec the electric mobility in Malaysia for ASEAN, with together with Australia, is, will become a reality and it is not only the production of today, meaning starting next year, but it is a continuous effort. It's a roadmap to ensure that the enablers remain strong, the technology remains strong, and we will not be left behind in terms of what's new in the uptake of all these technologies to make sure that whatever produced in terms of buses, in terms of vehicles, you know, remain relevant, remain the best in the region. So ladies and gentlemen, with that, thank you very much.